Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me. This week I have a couple of things to share with you. The first of which is uh, last week when I was doing my Alabama Channon uh, trolling on the web I came across uh, this pattern from Alabama Channon. I think it's just called the drawstring pant. Let me check my notes here. And um, this is something that I really wanted to make. However, I didn't buy the pattern because when I was looking at it, I realized I already have the Umbra pattern, the Umbra set, which is a jacket and our top and a pair of pants from Fiber and Cloth Studio. So I thought it's really essentially the same uh, basic pattern. It's a sort of a wide leg drawstring pant. So I decided I would just use that pattern. Um, before I use that pattern to do, do a bunch of hand stitching and everything though, I wanted to make sure that I liked the fit of the pattern and that I didn't need to alter anything. So I made it up. Now I knew I was going to use this pattern for a knit and it's actually drafted for a woven. I don't think that matters a whole lot in this particular pattern. Um, I cut the size, I think it's an A, it's the smallest size. Um, which has a finished hip measurement of 42 inches. I figured that would be perfectly fine for a knit pant, so that's what I um, used. I cut um, this out of a, this fabric is a, um, you might remember this from one of my inspiration videos. It was from Oak Fabrics in Chicago, and it is a, I wanna say a poly nylon blend. Um, it's a velour, but a very flat velour. I mean, it definitely has a nap to it, but it is very flat. And the backside is kind of smooth, almost slippery. This fabric doesn't have a lot of drape to it. I originally thought I was going to use it for a top, but then I didn't like the drape of the fabric that much. So I decided it would be better for this pair of pants. So here is what the pants look like as straight out of the package. Now, the only thing about this is you can see in these pictures, they're longer than most pants that I wear, um, but that is because they're not hemmed. Aside from that, I really like the fit of these. They are probably, they're definitely a little uh, closer in the seat than I usually wear. So I think for my next pair, I will add a half an inch to uh, both the back and the front pieces and that should give me an extra two inches in the total hip circumference. Um, the next size up I think was actually had more ease than that so I might be in between size A and size B in this pattern. Anyways, I really like the way these pants fit. Um, however, I felt like they were a little, I mean, it's nothing wrong with this pattern, believe me. And really nothing wrong with this fabric. This just was like, I wasn't super excited about these pants. So I um, put them aside for a couple of days. And then I was wearing this. And excuse the photo, it's very early in the morning in this picture. This is um, a sweatsuit that my husband bought me a couple years ago at Christmas. And I had this on and I was like, I, or thinking how much I really like the way these pants are. So I decided I would do this elastic hem in my umber pants. And I did that by um, taking my, I think my elastic is an inch and a quarter wide. I searched it to that hem, directly to the hem of the pants, and then I flipped it to the wrong side. I stitched it down, and this is what it looks like now. And I really, really love these pants. I think they came out super cute. Um, I don't feel like these pants have to have that elastic. They definitely need to be shorter than they were for me. But for this particular pair, I like the elastic treatment. And I think it was kind of a like fun and simple way to add a little interest to a really basic pant. In this photograph, I'm also wearing uh, the other thing I made this week, which is... Um, the Chris Wood Sews Start Here top. This one is in a rayon um, chenille. It's a woven chenille. It's very plush and very drapey, and I really, really love it. 
Now when I first cut this, my thought was I will do the same thing to this top that I did to the pants. I'll add elastic to the hem and to the cuffs. But when I got it mostly done, I really liked the way it was, so I just left it. And then I decided why don't I try the same top in a knit, which is what I'm wearing today. Since this was an experiment, I used a knit. This is a, um, again, this is, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a poly spandex. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell. I bought this fabric because, uh, A, it's my favorite shade of pink, but also it has these um, sort of terry cloth looking like daisies on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Anyways, it's ridiculously cute. It is a little bit lightweight, but I really love this fabric. So I thought it was inexpensive. So I, I felt like it was a good choice for an experiment. So this was my Chris Wood uh start here top, the one I have on right now, when I very first finished it, well, when I very first put it together. And <clears throat> I kind of hated it. <laughs> um, I felt like it was just, I mean, to be fair, it's not styled very well with like, you know, nothing on my legs and black boots doesn't look great. But, um, you can see it's not, it's not great. It's okay. It's not great. So I put that aside for a couple of days and then I decided to go back to my elastic trick and I thought, well, I was going to do the elastic in the black top. I'm going to try it in the pink. So I did the exact same thing. I put the elastic in the hem and in the cuffs and I did it exactly the way I did my pants and this is how it looks now. Agreed, it looks a lot better when it's styled with my super fun leggings that I made a few months ago when I was in my leggings mode. Um, especially from the side, I feel like it adds, I, I don't know if that's shape or if it just is um, adding control to the volume of the fabric. I know a lot of times when people make zero waste garments, they have an issue with that, with the volume of fabric, but I just thought it, this was a really good way to sort of make that volume work for you instead of just being like baggy, which isn't always bad. It's just in this particular fabric, I didn't like it. Um, so I feel like I could definitely make this top again in another knit. I would maybe size the body down a little bit, or maybe I would just do the elastic trick again. So here's the thing. I, I was going to tell you guys a couple of things about um, elastic today, but the, I was searching around for information. There are so many other like videos that already go into great detail on all of the different kinds of elastics, what they're good for, how they're made, and all of that stuff. And I didn't really feel like I had anything to contribute to that conversation. I will leave links to my two uh, preferred videos below, but you can just Google knit elastic versus woven elastic and you'll come up with videos. There are several kinds of elastic. Knit, woven, and braided are the most common types. There are definitely others. The one thing that I didn't see um, talked about in any of those other videos is something that I do whenever I sew through my elastic and that is to steam my elastic afterwards. I know I've said this before but I'm going to show you pictures here of um, this is a piece of elastic that I sewed into the bottom of a piece of fabric. I did it exactly the way I did my pant hems. You can see this is it when it's first stitched and you can see that that measures seven inches. After that, I just take that piece over to the iron and I'm not pressing it, I'm just steaming it and I'm giving it a lot of steam. And now you can see here, it's six and a half inches. Now, a half an inch might not seem like that much, but think about it this way. If this happens on a seven inch piece of elastic, if it gets stretched out to seven inches, then you're, if you have like a 24 inch piece of elastic, it's going to be, it's going to stretch considerably more. So you definitely want to shrink it back down to the, its original size and you do that simply by steaming it. <clears throat> the other thing I don't see people talking about in um, other videos on elastic is this. This is a piece of very firmly uh, woven elastic. It's very strong. Uh, woven elastics are stronger. 
Um, and you can obviously cut it widthwise. Oh, sorry. Yeah, widthwise like this, which is how you would cut it. However, if you cut it this way, like right up the side, you'll see, hopefully you'll see, it frays like crazy. Like your elastic is going to come, completely come apart. Sorry. <clears throat> My heater's gonna go on now and I'm just gonna talk louder. This one is a knitted elastic. It, you can see already that it's much looser. Obviously, when you cut it this way, you're perfectly fine. When you cut this this way though, when you cut right up the middle of this, or you cut a piece off, whatever, you get like a few little frays. Those are just the uh, edges that you just cut off. But the rest of it, it, its integrity is maintained. That is the reason the, that I um, prefer using knitted elastic, not because I need to cut it often, um, but it's nice to know that if you do cut it, you can make it a different width if you want to. The other thing is, if you're going to serge your elastic to a garment, um, like right onto the edge of a garment, which is what I usually do. It's best to have knitted elastic. So it's best to have knitted elastic or not use the blade on your serger. Most of the time I just turn the blade off, but in the event that I forget to turn it off, it's good to know that if it nicks my elastic, it's not really going to destroy my elastic. I'm not going to have to start over. It's going to be fine. So what's next? I am going to continue working on my Alabama Channon experiment and see how I get along with that. I am also taking the next few weeks off from making videos to spend some time with my family for the holidays. I will be back right after the new year. Um, until then, I wish you all happy holidays and happy sewing.